Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's here. So I saw something interesting uh, yesterday, and it said Jose Bautista is training to be a two-way player, so a hitter and a pitcher. And I get a lot of questions about this two-way player stuff or player transitioning from hitter to pitcher or pitcher to hitter and how hard is it and all that stuff. And so I wanted to throw this up here. First, it's interesting. You know, it's funny. About a week or so ago um, at our Anselme Baseball practice, we were talking about something and we were talking about hitting and somebody said, Jose Bautista, whatever happened to that guy? Where did he go? What happened? And then I saw this pop up, which is interesting. Um, so just to give you guys a quick thing on Jose Bautista, and then we're going to talk more about being both a hitter and a pitcher and, and trying to do both and how difficult it is and all that stuff. But so Bautista, 39 years old now. Um, so he's he is getting up there in age. Last played in the major leagues in 2018. And it looks like he's getting ready to play for the Dominican Republic as they try to qualify for a spot in the uh, 2020 Olympics, apparently. Um, but at that point, uh, Jeff Passon said that Bautista is probably going to play more first base. Not going to probably pitch in that. But apparently he is training to do both, okay? And he last appeared in the big league September 30th, 2018 with the Phillies. He kind of bounced around a lot there the last year or so um, of his career. He's still trying to have a career, but um, he really bounced around to a bunch of different teams. He was with the Braves, let's see, in 2018 with the Braves. Then he went to the Mets, and then he ended with the Phillies. In 122 combined games, he hit 203, 13 homers, 48 runs driven in. And he had 203 or 23 homers a season before with Toronto. So the last couple of seasons of his career weren't very solid. I'm not sure if those were injury ridden or not. Um, obviously the guy absolutely raked during his career. Uh, really interesting story. I don't know if you guys follow his entire story, how when he was with Pittsburgh, he you know, wasn't a great player, which basically felt like he was going to be out of the league. And then he changed his swing, went to a big leg kick. Um, started to get loaded much earlier, really changed his entire swing around, rebuilt it from the ground up, and then became one of the you know prolific home run hitters, power hitters, just all around great hitters in the league for a while there with the Blue Jays. Now he's obviously much, much older. So let's get into this whole two-way thing. Okay, first thing, if he comes back, um, I would really like to see him pitch against Rugnig or Odor. That's what I want to see. What's going to happen there? If, I don't know if you guys remember the uh, the, the, the punch thrown at uh, Bautista's face, which was one of the probably the best punches I've seen thrown in a baseball game. Um, other than maybe when Nolan Ryan had Robin Ventura headlocked and was throwing you know these hooks into his head, that was pretty cool too. Um, but anyways, that'd be some fireworks there for that at bat. Um, but when it comes to uh, to actually, you know what? Before we get into that. Now, some people might right now might be saying, there's no chance this can happen. Like, how the hell is this going to happen? I found a couple of, uh, of tweets. And so, first one, this is from uh, Marcus Stroman. You guys know Marcus Stroman, now with the Mets, filthy pitcher. Pitched at Duke. I remember when I was at Wake Forest coaching, he was at Duke. Everyone was talking about him. Little guy, throws hard. I remember everyone talking about it. Now he's a stud. But he actually put up a, uh, he put up a tweet. He said, my bro, Jose Bautista, is nasty on the mound. We've been working, working. All jokes aside, this man can pitch in a big league bullpen. I'll put my word on it. And this was in January, okay? So it claims that his fastball was up to like 94 miles an hour and his slider was pretty filthy. He also threw another breaking ball. You've got Stroman saying this. So um, I don't know. It's interesting. There's a lot of guys that can probably jump on a mound with great arms and throw hard. Um, I can show you a little bit of a breaking ball. It's a different thing to be able to get into a big league game and be able to pitch and locate and all that stuff. Um, it'd be really cool if you could do it. I'm not going to say you can't. It's definitely going to be tough, but it'd be cool to follow and see if this can happen. Okay. Now, let's talk about some other guys that have tried this in my experience because I saw this kind of up close and personal. Uh, but first of all, there's not many guys that can do this, right? You have Otani, who's kind of a freak show that can do both. He's on another level, right? He could be he could be a potential all-star pitcher and all-star hitter. Hopefully, he comes back completely healthy um, and uh, and and can stay on the field, okay? Um, but he's like one of a kind, just absolute again freak show in this in this day and age. It's really really difficult to do that. Who else do we have? Oh, Michael Lorenzen. 
So you've got him who can, you know, he throws the hell out of the ball and he can hit a little bit. Not on Otani's level, but someone that is, has shown that he might be able to do it at the big league level. And there's been a few other guys throughout the day. I remember, I don't know if you guys remember Rick Ankeel. Now, he wasn't doing it both at the same time, but he transitioned. He pitched, and he was a good pitcher, and then he kind of lost his command, and then he became a hitter. I played with him a little bit when I was with the Nationals. Um, so there have been some guys that have gone from hitter to pitcher or pitcher to hitter, but it's very difficult to do both at the same time. That's like almost impossible. And here's a quick quote, um, and then I want to talk about my personal experience. So this is Danny Duffy with the Royals. This is a quote that I found a little while ago. I was just kind of digging around the internet. And I found this. Um, he was asked if he could envision, you know, doing both simultaneously, hitting and pitching, because apparently he was a really good hitter um, as a younger player. And he said, not even close. I use all my time, and that's just for pitching. I use literally every second that I have to get ready to pitch, okay? And so this is one of the, this is the first really big thing, is that it takes a lot of work just to be a, uh, let's just say to be a pitcher or to be a hitter. It takes a ton, a ton, a ton of time and work to just focus on that, to do it at the big league level. Remember, it's the highest level, it's the best players in the world. I know some players make it look easy, but it takes a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. And there are millions and millions and millions of people that try to play baseball at the major league level and only do one thing and they can't do it because it's so hard. And there's tons of people that get to the big leagues and then get sent right down. Okay, so it is hard. It is extremely, extremely hard just to get to the big leagues. And then it is even harder to stay at the big leagues and not get kicked out of there and sent back down. And that's at one position. And you literally do put, you know, I've talked a lot about the schedule that you have and how much work you put in. And that's just for one thing. Now imagine if you have to do both things, how hard that is. Now you've got to split your time. So you can't work as hard on one thing as you can on the other, which means you're not going to be probably as good as it as the other. So it's just really, really difficult. And then the demands of your body, that's what's really, really tough, right? So pitchers, let's just say you're a starting pitcher. If you're a starting pitcher, well, you have, five, you have you know, days off. You throw once every five days or so, right? There's five pitchers. And so you need those days off to be able to rest and recover. Uh, your, your arm hurts. Your body hurts. And now if you do that and then you have to go hit those other days, well, then you really can't recover, right? I guess you could DH, but still you're taking a lot of swings. You're still beating up your body. Then you get to go back and pitch. It's so hard for a pitcher to be able to make it through 30-plus stars. That's why guys that can, that can just get out on the mound – um, 30 times a year and eat up innings. Those guys are really valuable. They get paid at the big leagues because it's hard to just do that. Um, and obviously, they're being successful too, okay? You can't just go on the mound and just, you know, lob it in there and get crushed. You have to be somewhat successful, but be able to do it day after day after day and get on the mound, okay? Um, it's just really, really difficult to be able to do both. And, um, you know, if you're going to do it, you're probably going to have to be in the bullpen, I would assume. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but... It's really tough, okay? Now, let's talk about one thing that I saw. And I saw a transition. I saw more of uh, the opposite of like a Rick and Keel. So I never really saw anyone doing both at the same time. Um, but I saw Matt Bush. If you guys know Matt Bush, Matt Bush was the, um, was he the first overall? I think he was the first overall pick of the Padres. A couple years before I was, I wasn't the first overall pick. I was first round pick. But we were drafted a couple years apart. And so I played with Matt Bush. He was a hitter. And he struggled as a hitter, and they transitioned to him to a pitcher. Now, this is easier, obviously. Okay, you can't hit, but you got a great arm. We'll make you a pitcher. Now he just uses all of his time in pitching and not at hitting. So not as difficult, but still pretty impressive to be able to do both at the, at the professional level. Um, and he ended up getting to the big leagues as a pitcher. And I was there. I was on his team the very first day this happened. I said this in one other video. I don't remember what video this is. That was, so I'm going to say it again. I was there. We were in the California League. I don't remember exactly where we were, but I remember Matt Bush playing shortstop. Okay, he played shortstop, wasn't hitting very well, making a couple of errors. And uh, I remember they said, hey, let, let's go throw a bullpen. All right, let's try a bullpen out because they had been talking about this. And in the draft, you know, in high school, he had a great arm. And when he got drafted, he was really drafted as like a two way guy, but they made him just try to hit and it wasn't working out. And, uh, and I'd seen Matt Bush throw because I saw him get cutoffs, right? I saw him get a cutoff in the outfield. They throw it to him. He gets it. And he threw the ball home. And he threw this thing. And I was like, that's maybe the best arm i ever seen. I mean, this ball came out about a bajillion miles an hour. And I was like, holy crap, that ball is, that, that's a cannon. That's, him and this guy, Jordani Ramirez, had two of the best arms I've ever seen. They're both on the same team. We're all together in, in 
uh, Lake Elsinore, California. And so one day they said, hey, get on the mound. We're going to throw a little bit of bull, a little bullpen. So I'm taking infield during batting practice. And I'm kind of looking over. And Matt Bush is on the mound. And he's throwing absolute fuego. And they're like, boom, boom, boom. He's throwing strikes. And I was like, uh, I think this might be the end of his hitting career right here. Like, he looks really good. And that was the end of his hitting career pretty much. They turned him into a pitcher. And he ended up having a couple of issues with some other stuff. But anyways, he ended up getting in the big leagues. And uh, I don't know what he's doing right now. If he, is he still in the big leagues? I have to check this out. But he throws like almost 100 miles an hour. It was unbelievable how good that arm was. And so he successfully transitioned. You know, watching him in the, in the field as a position player, he probably was never going to make it to the big leagues um, as a position player. Transitions to a pitcher, boom. If he didn't have, you know, some of those issues, he probably would have had a, a super long successful career as a pitcher because he had one of those gifted arms that's just like, it's just an arm that you don't ever see. He just threw that freaking hard. But that's a guy that successfully transitioned. So I was there and I saw that happen. Um, I was, like I said, I saw the whole Ricky and Kale thing. Again, I never saw him as a pitcher, um, but I saw him as a hitter. And man, was he a freak show athlete. Like, he was a great, a big, strong dude. I used to watch him on TV throwing for the Cardinals. And I remember watching him when he couldn't throw a strike anymore. He was throwing the ball all over the place. And then all of a sudden, I'm over with Washington, and he's there. And he has an absolute bazooka from center field. And he could left-handed swing, good swing, strong hitter, good outfielder. Um, so there's been a couple of guys that have been able to transition. But it is super, super, super hard, guys, especially to do both at the same time. Unbelievable. So long story short, I hope this happens because um, it would be cool to watch. I think it's going to be difficult, but we'll see, okay? Um, so keep your eye out for that. And that is all we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Comment in the section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you guys get all our videos. Uh, what else? Thank you to our patrons on Patreon who help support the channel. We really appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later.